that one that was just uh, something I was thinking about as I was waiting for my turn <laughs> after all the very nice quiet intelligent uh, technical talk I thought it would be cool to play a little tribute to uh, Jimi Hendrix on the seaboard so um, and that's, that's, um, so we're gonna talk about that's sort of the a, a, a key part of the point for that keyboard right which is that precisely uh, you can uh, replicate the experience of a guitar, so not just the sound, so a bunch of electronic keyboards are able to replicate kind of the sound of a distorted guitar, uh, but actually replicate the, uh, the, the experience, um, the sonic experience of a, of a guitar. Right. The, uh, the beauty of this, there's a lot of things to talk about with the seaboard, but uh, actually I'll switch back to that lead sound for a second so I can explain it. Um, this is an instrument that uh, is based on a classic piano keyboard type of an architecture but it is kind of like the evolution of that. We're not coming out with the seaboard to replace the piano as we know it, but we feel that using the piano kind of mindset that so many people have, it's so ingrained in the musical world, um, we can kind of like change it up and move to the next kind of level and, and offer anybody who, who, whether they played piano or they didn't, we can kind of offer them this new flexibility with technology. So for instance, one of the things we can do with this lead sound, for example, is in the past, to do something like what I just did, I'd need sliders, I'd need joysticks, I'd need pitch wheels, I'd need all kinds of controllers to make all the things that aren't just the straight ahead notes. If you think about a piano, let's say, a piano is going to play definite notes and that's it. You can't bend the pitch, you can't really change the tone once it starts, but on the seaboard, um, the seaboard has full flexibility. So if I press down on a key, I can press into it, I can wiggle it, I can slide, and all those things do different things. Like if I want to bend pitch on the seaboard, I can play a note and just either slide on, on what's called the ribbon or I can even slide using a gesture on the keyboard. Or you've seen probably pianists who will kind of shake their finger on a key in hope that something happens, but nothing really happens. But on a C board, something really does. If I play, let's say, up a C major scale and I stop and then shake, so my left hand, I'm relaxing, I can conduct with my left hand. <laughs> I don't have to use like a theremin control, I don't have to move a pitch wheel, everything is done with your finger kind of on the key, which is the big concept here. It's about um, offering kind of the full musical control uh, that you want. You want to have your finger on the pulse of the sonic event. So without my finger leaving this key, I can be holding the note and like pressing into it, like I can press this note and, and then I press and shake. And then if I want to, I can slide off of the actual keyboard and move to a ribbon where I can do longer slides. So if I want to go. So one of the things that's very cool about the seaboard is that you have this keyboard form factor. And, and this is um, 
silicon, actually. And so in addition to the form factor of a keyboard, which you can see, you also have kind of a, a, a ribbon at the top of the keys and a ribbon at the bottom of the keyboard. So what this means is that the Seaboard kind of is this next generation instrument that changes a lot of things up, but the starting point for it, for it is something that we all know. We all know about the piano keyboard. And in my experience, this is something that's been you know, really interesting to watch with technology and instruments, because I've seen a lot of really cool technology come about doing all kinds of interesting stuff, but very often it's very left of center. It doesn't relate to anything we know, so you have to change your whole paradigm. It's a whole different thing, but the reason that I'm working with this company is because I thought it was really cool to offer an instrument that's based on something that's so familiar, but to shake it up so much and push it to the next generation. So um, let me play another sound for you so you can really get the, uh, the idea of how kind of slippery and almost fretless this keyboard can be. Um, well, I first met Roland Lamb, who's the CEO, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. We were going to do a little show together. Um, about two years ago, I met him. And at that point, he, he, I guess, had gotten the company started, got it rolling, and he was ready to show me the instrument. I was like, when he came in my door, I was like, what took you so long? I've been thinking about this for a long time. How did any of you approach How does the CEO Cool. <laughs> hey, it's an echo over there. That's really cool. How does the CEO of our company approach, uh, you know, uh, somebody who's very well known um, yeah. and, and, and make a case? Uh, the CEO approached me by uh, taking a, a case with the Seaboard and walking it up to my studio himself and unveiling it and saying, <laughs> check this out. But um, it was recommended. There was a lot of tie-ins with Roland. He, he had heard my name a bunch because I'm very you know, involved with musical expression and technology and he heard about me. I think he was really waiting to kind of contact me. So finally, when he felt like he was ready and there was something playable, you know, he reached out and um, he's based, you know, the company's based uh, actually in the UK. But Roland and his partner Corey took a little trip and visited me in New York to show me the instrument. And so you've been involved in, um, in user you know, testing. Um, you know, since this is a, a hardware event, any any comment on your experience of how you've been working with a team and the type of feedback you've given them and how this whole thing has yeah. worked? Um, one of the really important things with music technology is, and, and it's something that a lot of the companies really forget about when they're producing instruments, is that the end result of it all is that it has to be something that you give to a musician and they feel like they can really be comfortable with and also express themselves. A lot of times, and I won't mention any you know, names, but if I play like a you know, commercial keyboard, something that might be just a, uh, you know, a leading product on the market, I'll have a lot of like, issues with it. And the problem is because I don't feel like the, the loop between artists and the, the engineers is really the way that it should be. So one of the things that I do with Roly that I'm very excited about and encouraged about is that like when Roland came to me, he was like, Jordan, I want you to be the head of music experience and I want you to make sure that everything we do 
is really as you would like to see it, and you think it's all musical and it makes a lot of sense. So I was like, wow, that's amazing. That's really, really great. So, you know, obviously in a company like this, they're doing some amazing things with technology and some things that are just beyond my, you know, ability to really understand it because I'm a musician, I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer. However, I've worked with technology for a long time. So there's always that point when something can come out of engineering or something is in testing where they say to me, hey, we want you to put your hand on this to see what it feels like. You know, we want you to try this. So I've been uh, actually at Roly, I've been playing on different kind of s on sensors. They'll put a little sensor board, a little strip over it, and I'll try the sensor board. I've tried various kind of sliders. And what's fantastic and what's really, I think, something very powerful in the whole way that they're kind of positioning this new company is that they're thinking about that. They, uh, they listen to me in my specialty when I recommended to them to have certain musicians represent this organization. There's a guy who's actually with Roland in San Francisco doing something that was somebody I thought was so talented and had such a feel for this. When he sat down at the seaboard for the first time, the guy's name is Marco Parisi, he sat down and he started to do the bends and do all these expressions. I was like, oh my God, it's a natural seaboard player, somebody who can really, really relate to that. So the fact that he was immediately embraced, I was like, okay, fantastic, this is great. So now I'm looking at a company, I'm working with a company who is positioning all these things in such a way that it's so different, it's so unique, and there's been such great interest in the company as well. I've never seen in my career, you know, as a musician, and also in the music business working with manufacturers, I've never seen anything like what's going on with Roly. It's really, really unique. Um, and what I think is, uh, just to finish this uh, idea, what I think is the most powerful thing is that Roly is coming out with an instrument that has so many important things about it that are so different than what's um, already been out there on the market. Things that we, people, have been, musicians have been waiting to have happen. This whole idea of fretless control and independent voices where you can play one note and vibrato it a little bit and maybe play another note and not vibrato it or increase volume on it. We've all been, all of us have been really waiting for that. So they're building a very solid foundation, something really strong, including musicians, hiring amazing engineers, and it's really interesting to watch. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, fantastic. And since you're so involved in the user experience, how do you think about, um, you know, expert early adopters versus a broader audience and how to design a product that will meet uh, your needs, uh, but also the need of yeah. more average users? Right, right. Well, um, first of all, Roly's been very... Um, good about kind of getting the word out and bringing people in who have a strong voice, who can, who can you know, tell other musicians about what it is in many different ways. Um, you know, it's, it's, that part is unusual too. It's just, uh, so the reach has been great to get to musicians who can try it and play it and talk about it. But then of course, there comes the time where it's not kind of like, okay, well, it's time to deliver the product and what was it gonna be and all the realities of, of product. And that's another part of what I've been kind of watching with Roly is that positioning and a lot of listening uh, to people about that as well. You know, I mean, areas that are not my specialty, but I, uh, I understand, like price point, what are you going to offer, what's the, you know, what is, how do you turn this into some, something that's a consumer friendly, you know, instrument, how do you sell it, a lot of different things. But I see that it's being done in such a way where I, where I, you know, I'm very excited about it. I go, wow, this could really work. This is something that's cool. Because I've followed the path of many of these companies who make instruments, you know, mostly uh, keyboards, and I see the things that don't work and that do work. And this is such a new idea that, you know, they have to be very careful. And, you know, I think it's, just, it's, it's you know, a very interesting um, and I think very effective plan that they have. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you use it um, in connection with, with software as well to, to create sounds and all those things? Yeah. Yeah. Well, right now the Seaboard, actually the way that it's working now is that uh, it's running through MIDI. Basically, I have a USB cable going out and it's plugged into a computer that's running sounds. And I can play any sound, really. There's certain sounds that I chose that are more effective than other sounds. Um, 
in the near future, actually, there's a processor on board in the seaboard, so we won't have to have it connected to anything, and you'll just be able to play it and have its own internal synthesizer, which is going to be really a big step. So at that point, you'll be able to have it as a standalone unit, and you'll also be able to connect it to like a computer and plug it, you know, plug it into any sounds that you might want in the outside world, which is, you know, really what you want. Very cool. I want to open up to questions. Yep. Um, it sounds like you take a lot of thought about the player of the instrument. How much do you think about the people who listen to the music produced by the instrument? And does that come into like, your design process at all? Um, what's, yeah, I, I think it's really important to build an instrument that has the flexibility to reach you know, a wide group of people. And that basically means that you have to have an instrument that's capable of producing many different musical styles. So, you know, in designing a flexible instrument, that is the way to kind of achieve that goal. So yeah, there's a big consideration about making something that's not only going to work for like classical music, but that might work for rock music. That's why, you know, I can sit and the first thing I do is play like a wild, you know, Hendrixy kind of lead, and the next thing I do is play some kind of Indian music. And then, you know, we kind of like test it for that. Like, how's it going to work playing like a jazz thing? Like, a, you know, how does it express a saxophone? How about an acoustic bass? We want it to be something where if you are like a film composer, you can use it, have, you know, have it right next to your computer and you can express, you know, a musical line that you wouldn't be able to do on anything else. So, and if you're, uh, you know, making hip hop music, you might want to have some kind of wobble bass sound and, have to, and use pressure to do that. So that's totally like a, con a big consideration. So my name is Alex Off, <clears throat> and I work at a mobile health company called Well, um, but I'm a, a drummer and a musician. Oh, cool. Um, so I'm really interested, it sounds like this, um, a big part of the design process was making it uh, extremely expressive for musicians who are limited by their tools and not by their skills. Mm. Um, do you think that there's something about the form factor or the interface that makes it easier to learn to play as well, like to, for young musicians to connect with the music? Yeah. Well, um... You know, this is a deep musical instrument. The thing that, that we didn't make it so that it's kind of like, you know, an instant thing, like, you know, an app on your iPhone where you automatically have a certain scale and or you're going to strum a chord by just pressing a button. It's not, that's not the thinking behind it. The idea is that we're giving you kind of a piano style interface. So the layout is something that you might be familiar with. And if you're not, it's something that's very standard. Beyond that, you know, you, one has to kind of work. To, uh, to play this instrument. If you're a pianist, if you played the piano, you're going to have a head start. There's definitely going to be you know, something for you. You'll be able to uh, you know, play. You'll be able to do something. And some people who play piano sit down, and right away, they're playing it. And I'm like, wow. And other people are like, wow, I really got to wrap my head around that. And it takes time. And even for somebody like me, who's been playing the piano for so many years, and synthesizers, every day that I play this, I'm always thinking, oh man, I just figured out this really cool technique. So it's kind of like something you, that one will want to and need to spend time with to uh, develop this new language. Because it really is a new, it's a new language of, you know, keyboard playing, like fretless keyboard playing. Hi. Uh, it's awesome. Well done. Um, are you, anyone using this to input other kind of data, not just music? You could play games or solve CSI crime or something. Um, not, not yet, not yet, but certainly this technology is like wide open, this whole touch technology that's kind of like, you know, the, 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 the Roly masterminds are certainly not only thinking about music. And anybody who is, uh, you know, into technology, when you touch this and see how it sends data, you, you know, you think, oh, wow, well, there's a lot you could do with that. So um, I don't know if anybody who's actually doing anything with it right this moment, there might be somebody at the company that's, you know, hacked something together, probably. But, uh, but certainly, you know, this kind of touch technology is, is awesome and you can think of so many uses for it. Yeah, w without revealing too much, there may or may not be some uh, drum and beat related uh, apps in the future. Just curious, the early synthesizers weren't necessarily uh, uh, responsive to the hammer, right? You know, soft versus hard. Is this, is this sensitive to the impact that you Yes, this instrument is sensitive to the impact, but it's also sensitive to the pressure after the fact. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you.
Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Aaron Franco, CTO of Quickslot. What's the price point on this instrument? The price point. Hey, Evan, do you want to? Uh, that's the CWR grant stage. It's a 61 QA. The introductory price on that is 3000 3000 But you're supposed to say, but tonight. <laughs> Special price for you, my friend. And you get a free lesson with it as well. <laughs> there you go. You know, I want to say that I was thinking while you were talking, one of the things about this, one, one thing that we're trying to do with this instrument and this technology is bring the playing experience more, closer to your, your physical being. The idea, you know, for many years people were saying, oh, electronic music, it's, it's not, you know, it's just very mechanical, it's not organic. But with the Seaboard, we're trying to make something that is more organic than maybe anything else that you've ever played. That's, that's really the, the goal. That's what the most exciting thing about this is, that your finger can go down in a note, and you can... And I can feel that real connection with, you know, what's going on in my head, what's being transmitted down my arm to my fingers, and make a musical statement. And that's what I think that we've, you know, achieved. And, that's what, what it is. It's very quite amazing, right? Like the the, uh, the 60s and 70s had all these iconic keyboards, like the Rhodes and the Wurlitzers yeah. and all those things, and then nothing happened, right, for, for decades. Uh, or, or is that an unfair statement in terms of evolution of well, then really interesting new keyboards? Well, then you had the, the you know, birth of like the synthesizer, although that, you know, the Moog right. synthesizer, the right, right, right. modular synthesizers, mini Moogs, and there's been a lot of technology, but the problem has been the control factor, finding something. There's been a lot of different kinds of controllers as well, all kinds of weird things that people come up with, but nothing has really caught on that's outside of the, the norm. And again, that's why I think this is really important. That's why I'm even here tonight, because I think this is something that really could bring us into the future and catch on in a, in a big way, you know, get the ear of composers and arrangers, and I think everybody, once they understand what this will do, I don't see you know any reason why they wouldn't go into a music store and say, I need one of those. Right, right. All right, so maybe we'll one last question, is there somebody else you can, you get a second one, uh, and then I, I think I'm not gonna resist the temptation of asking you to play a little more. Okay. Does <laughs> um, this, the introduction of this instrument into the musical world possibly make other instruments obsolete? Let's say like an entire orchestra would be using these. Is that something that you could see in the future? Um, it's hard to make classic instruments obsolete because really, you know, if you're, let's say I was playing a string sound on this, right, which I have. I could play a very beautiful, very effective string sound on this, but it's never going to really replace the real thing. It's something different. It might be amazing and beautiful and, you know, really expressive, but it's not going to replace it. So, you know, I think a great instrument is a great instrument. This instrument offers other, you know, capabilities. I think that this might replace or will replace a lot of the keyboards that are in people's homes that have them connected to computers that are like arranging, composing music. I think there's no doubt um, because if they don't, you know, at some point if they don't like add this to it or maybe even replace, then they're going to miss out on, on all this new kinds of expression that they could have. So, but, but again, this is not to replace the piano keyboard because you can play certain things that, like I could play something on a piano that I just couldn't play on this and vice versa. I could play something on this that I just couldn't play on the piano just by the way that it's laid out and the way it feels and all that kind of stuff. So. Could you give us a demonstration of something you couldn't play on the piano that you could play on this? that I couldn't play on the piano. Yeah, well, the sounds, sure, the sounds that I, like the one I have in front of me now, which I was gonna play, is something that I definitely couldn't play because it's, it's, it's like a, uh, a sax emulation, right? But the way that it's expressed, I could never do. Like, uh, you know. I mean, right there, even just bending the note and shaking it, already it's not, I can't do it on the piano, so.
piano piece? No. No, I don't have, first of all, I didn't prepare like a piano sound. And if I did, I wouldn't play it because I, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't play it the way I would want to. But I mean, to contrast what a piano might sound like versus what this could enhance. Oh, right. You know what, what we'll do is after the formal uh, get together is over, I'll call the piano sound and kind of I can show, I can explain and show that. I think that'd be the best way to do it. All right. Maybe just one one last thing. Then pick pick whatever sound or whatever. Yeah. Whatever you want. I'll pick one, then, one of my favorite. I'll, I'll pick one, pick one of my favorite sounds. This is a sound that's kind of a cross between something that's realistic and something that's also kind of new. Um, you'll hear like a guitar element, but also a dreamy element. Um, so here, check it out. Can you play another day? <laughs> <laughs> I could, but not right now. <laughs> I love that one because it has this kind of almost lap steel quality that I can get. And what's, uh, what's fun about it is that I feel like my Juilliard training kind of comes into uh, play because I can do things like I can hold a couple of notes like this. And while those are holding, I can take another two and bend them like. So just to have the kind of finger control to. <laughs> I would show her, but she's not on the planet Earth anymore. <laughs> all right, on, on, on that note, thank you so much. This was absolutely wonderful. Thank, thank you. you all. Thanks.